Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Brittany of BrittanyJJones.com. If this is your first time tuning in, welcome to the channel. I hope that you would like what you see and subscribe below for more. In today's video, we are going to be sewing. We're going to be sewing along to the new McCall's 8480. This is a mystery skirt in three different lengths and I'm going to be following along with view A in this video. Regardless of which view you decide to go with, the construction is still the same. I'm just going with view A because it's the shorter version and it's great for for filming purposes if I don't need to you know so the whole skirt if I can just sew the shorter version I will but again the construction is still the same regardless of whichever view you decide to make for fabric I am using a twill and for size reference I cut the size 22 I did not make any adjustments to it so go ahead and cut out your pattern pieces cut out your fabric transfer those markings and let's get started sewing to begin, we're going to get started with pattern piece number one, and you want to make sure that you transfer all of your circles here as well as your notches. As you can see, I did go ahead and finish off my center seam with my serger, and I also applied some fusible interfacing right here where I will be installing the zipper. This is just going to help to stabilize this area a little bit more. So I do recommend putting some interfacing behind your zippers and your buttons things that are just going to be high stress point areas. But again, that's totally optional. It doesn't have it in the pattern instruction, so you can do without it if you choose, but that is why I have the interfacing there. The first thing that we're going to do is with the right sides facing, I have my pattern pieces right sides facing, we are going to pin from the large circle to this notch, and we're going to stitch just between the large circle and the notch. Okay, now that we have it pinned, we can go ahead and stitch at a 5 of an inch seam allowance. Make sure that you back stitch at the beginning and the end. And again, it's from the large circle to the notch. Let's go ahead and stitch here now. Okay, now that we have stitched here between the large circle and the notch, on the left front opening edge, we are going to turn under 3 8 of an inch and give that a press. So again, make sure that you're working on the left side. Again, head to the pressing station. We're going to press under 3 8 of an inch on the left front opening. Okay, I'm back from the pressing station. I've pressed under 3 8 of an inch here on the left front opening. The next thing that we're going to do, I'm just going to flip this over right side facing. Still working on the left side. I'm going to take my zipper here, and with the zipper facing right sides up, we're just gonna slide the zipper right up under the left side here. You want this pressed edge to be right up against the teeth of the zipper. I have it lined up here at the top. Now my zipper is longer than what's required for this garment, so I will trim it off at the end. But if yours is exactly the seven inches, then your zipper stop should probably be up here close to the small dot. But if yours is a little bit longer than mine, it's okay, we can trim it off in a later step. But again, on the left front opening, you want to slide your zipper under this pressed edge that we just pressed. I have the top of the zipper matched up here. I have the pressed edge right along the zipper teeth. I am going to pin this in place and then we're going to baste it. Let's go ahead and baste it in place now. Okay, now that you have your zipper basted in place, let's go ahead and move to the next step. Next, we're gonna take our left fly, which is pattern piece number six. And with right sides together, we're gonna fold along the fold line like so and we're going to stitch here along the lower edge at a 5 of an inch seam allowance. Now that you have it sewn, let's go ahead and trim it and then we can turn it right sides out. Now we can go ahead and give it a good press and then we can baste the raw edges together. Okay, I have my fly pressed and I've also basted the raw edges together. You can see I also finished off this raw edge with my serger here. What we're gonna do now, we're gonna take this facing and we're gonna place it right behind the zipper still working on the left front of the skirt. And we can look at it from the inside here. We're gonna pin the facing here over the zipper match up your small dot as well. And then we can base this in place again right over the zipper.
Once you have it basted in place, now we can go ahead and do our final stitch. And we're just gonna follow right along with our basting stitch to secure through all thicknesses. So again, after you have it basted, let's go to the sewing machine. We can pop on our zipper foot and we're just gonna stitch following along with our basting through all thicknesses. Okay, now that I have it stitched, I'm gonna go ahead and remove all of my basting stitches. Okay, once you have removed your basting stitches, now we can go ahead and start to work on the right fly. Pattern piece number seven is our right fly facing. You should have cut out one of fabric and one of interfacing. I've gone ahead and fused it together and now I'm gonna finish off this outer curved edge with my serger. Let's go ahead and finish that off now. If you don't have a serger, you can use an overcast stitch. You can use a zigzag stitch. You could also use bias tape if you have that. You have several options that you can use to finish off any of your seams if you don't have a serger. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use my serger though to finish off this edge. Okay, now that we have the right fly facing finished along this outer edge here, now you wanna go ahead and grab your front and now we can start working on the right front opening. So with the right sides facing, I'm gonna place this down here along the right, matching up the notches as well as our dot, and I'm going to pin in place. Okay, now that we have it pinned, we can go ahead and stitch in a 5 of an inch seam allowance. Let's go ahead and stitch it now. Okay, now that we have it stitched, I'm gonna go ahead and trim down my seam. Next, after you have your seam trimmed, we can go ahead and do some understitching. With understitching, you want your seam allowance facing toward your facing, and we're going to stitch really close to the seam, catching in the facing and the seam allowance, not the skirt. So again, make sure that you have your seam allowance facing toward your facing, and let's go ahead and do some understitching. Now that we have it understitched, we can go ahead and press this toward the inside and give it a really good press. Okay, now that I have it understitched and pressed toward the inside, I'm just gonna lap the right over the left like so and it should fall naturally. Next, we're going to batch up the centers and I'm going to baste this edge here closed through all thicknesses. This just helps us to know that after we finish attaching the zipper on the inside and after we do our top stitch, once we remove the basing, we know that everything is gonna lay nice and flat because we've already basted it closed. This is optional, you don't have to baste it, but I do recommend basting and I'm gonna baste it now by hand. I do find that doing it by machine is kind of tricky because you have your zipper pull, your zipper stop, it's a lot happening that you really can't see under here. So I'm just going to go ahead and baste this by hand. Again, I'm just basting this closed here through all thicknesses. Okay, now that we have basted it through all thicknesses, let's go ahead and turn it to the inside. And I'm going to pin this left facing here out of the way because I'm only working on this side of the zipper tape with the right fly facing. So we can pin this out of the way so we don't accidentally sew it. And so, Again, we're only sewing the zipper tape and the fly facing, so make sure that you don't have your front. I'm just going to place a few pins here. So now we can go to the sewing machine and with our zipper foot on, we're going to stitch close to the zipper teeth and then we're gonna stitch down the center of the zipper tape. Again, only on the right fly facing and this zipper tape here, not on the front. Let's go ahead and do both of those stitches now. All right, now that we have this zipper tape sewn to the right fly facing, now we can go ahead and flip it to the right side and we want to do our top stitching here. You do wanna make sure that you keep the left facing out of the way. You don't want to catch this, only the right one while doing this stitch. So you may want to place your fly over like so and pin that out of the way. 
So on this side here, we can go ahead and do our stitch. If your marking has went away like mine, you can go ahead and grab your front pattern piece here. You can transfer your stitching line marking again, this dashed line here, and then go ahead and stitch it right here onto the front, following along with your stitching line. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and stitch it in place, following along with my marking that I just transferred. Okay, I went ahead and gave it a light press. You do have the option to do a bar tack along your stitching line. You can do, honestly, as many as you want. You can probably put one here around the curve and one here down at the bottom. That's optional and it's totally up to you, but I did want to mention that you can add some bar tacks to your stitching line. Next, let's go ahead and turn it to the inside. On the inside, now we're gonna hand tack our fly and our facing together here. Again, we could just do some quick tacks. If you prefer, you can go to the sewing machine and just kind of do a quick little back and forth just to secure the fly and the facing together. And then we can trim away the excess zipper here. Okay, I've gone ahead and trimmed my zipper. I trimmed it off using my pinking shears and I also went ahead and tacked the facing to the fly. I just did a few stitches back and forth here to secure them in place only. Only the fly and the facing together. Next, we can move on to our next step and that is to pin and stitch the remaining of our center seam here along the front. You can begin stitching where you left off here at your notch and just continue stitching down this seam. Let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, I have the center seam sewn and I have pressed my seam open flat. Now let's go ahead and grab pattern piece number two. Pattern piece number two, this is our middle front. And what we're gonna do first is do some stay stitching here right along this curve. And you should have transferred some notches here. So we're not gonna go past the double notches for the stay stitching. So right here up to this curve is where we're gonna do the stay stitching. The stay stitching is done at 1 8 of an inch for this pattern and other patterns is done at about a half of an inch. But for this pattern, the instructions calls for 1 8 of an inch. I'm probably gonna do mine around a quarter of an inch. But again, we're just gonna do some stay stitching and we wanna start down here at the bottom and finish at the top of the curve as opposed to starting here and stitching down. We don't wanna stretch this curve out. So again, starting here right beside the double notches, go ahead and do an eighth of an inch stay stitch right along the curve on both of these pattern pieces. Let's do that now. Okay, now that we have the stay stitching done, let's go ahead and grab our front piece. We are going to pin here, matching our middle front to our front, right sides facing, and we're gonna stitch these sections together at a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. Make sure that you match up your notches and pin in place. Let's go ahead and stitch it at a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. And then after we have it sewn, we can finish off our edges with our serger and press our seam going toward the front. Let's go ahead and stitch them in place now. Okay, after we have it sewn, you wanna go ahead and finish off your seams and then press your seams going toward the front. And now on the right side, we can go ahead and do some top stitching right here beside these seams. Top stitching is done at a quarter of an inch away from the seam. So a quarter of an inch away from this, you want to do some top stitching. Let's go ahead and do that for both sides here. Okay, now that we have our top stitching done here along the front, let's go ahead and grab pattern piece number three, which is our side front. For our side front, we are going to place it here, right side spacing. You should have transferred some notches. I'm going to match up my double notch. I'm gonna start pinning in place. If you need to, you can place some clips right here along the skirt to open it up to ease in the curve here 
on the side front. I'm gonna finish pinning first and then I will start to clip to ease in that fabric. So I'm gonna take my snips here and just place some clips and I'm not clipping through my stay stitching, I'm just clipping right to it. And that's just gonna spread open the fabrics for me so I can ease in this curve here. Okay, now that we have it pinned, we can go to the sewing machine and we'll go ahead and stitch this in place. We're gonna do the same thing to the other side. You just want to match up your notches and go ahead and pin it in place and then clip along the curves to help ease in the curve here on pattern piece number three. Let's go ahead and stitch them in place now. Okay, I have the side front pattern piece three stitched on. This is what the seam looks like on the inside. And this is what it looks like on the outside. I'm going to finish off my edge with the serger and then we want to press it going toward the front. Let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, I have the side front sewn and I've gone ahead and pressed my seam going toward the middle front. And so now we're going to do top stitching on the middle front, not the side front. That's where you want to have your top stitching at and the top stitching is done at a quarter of an inch away from the seam here. So let's go ahead and do top stitching along both of the middle fronts here. Let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, now that we have our top stitching done, we can move on to the next step and that is to start working on the side pockets. To begin working on the side pocket, we need to grab pattern piece number four. You should have cut out two. And starting on one side here with right sides facing, I'm gonna place my pocket down and I'm gonna pin around the curve here at the top. Okay, now that you have it pinned, we can go ahead and pin the other the same way and go ahead and stitch at a 5 of an inch seam allowance. After you have it stitched, you can trim your seam. You do want to clip into these curves and then just go ahead and give it a press. Once you have trimmed your seam, you can see here I did use my pinking shears just to kind of go into the curve to help reduce more of the bulk. Once you have it trimmed, you can go ahead and give it a press and we can press it toward the inside like so. So let's go ahead and trim and press now. Now that we have pressed the pocket toward the inside like so, I did do some understitching. That's just my personal preference. I love doing understitching on pockets. I think it just helps everything to lay nicely toward the inside, but that's not on the instruction, so you do not have to do it. But I did want to mention that I did do some understitching here right along the pocket edge. So now that you have the pocket pressed toward the inside, let's go ahead and do some top stitching. And top stitching is done a quarter of an inch away from the edge. So. Make sure again that you're coming down a quarter of an inch away from the edge and then do your row of top stitching here. Let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, once you have your top stitching done here, and as you can see, I just kind of blended my line here with this row of top stitching that we did in the beginning. Now, once you have the top stitching done, let's go ahead and grab pattern piece number five. Okay, pattern piece number five. This is our side front and our pocket. You should have cut out two. And what we're gonna do here, I'm gonna turn this front to the inside like so, is with right sides facing, we are going to match up our pocket facing with the side front and pocket and match it up here. You wanna match up your notches and let's go ahead and pin it in place. Once you have it all pinned, let's go ahead and stitch in a 5 of an inch seam allowance along this curved edge here of the pocket. We're going to do the same thing for the other side. Let's go ahead and stitch it in place now.
Okay, now that we have our pocket sewn on, you can see I went ahead and finished off my edge with my serger here. And once you have that done, you can go ahead and baste the raw edges together along the upper edge of the skirt and along the side. Just baste it to hold those layers together. Once you have that done, let's go ahead and start to work on the back. To get started on the back, you wanna grab pattern piece eight and nine. This is the back as well as the middle back. You should have transferred single notches. We are gonna match those up and pin those in place. So with right sides facing, match up your single notches. And let's go ahead and pin. Okay, once you have it pinned, we are going to go ahead and stitch at a 5 of an inch seam allowance. And after you have it stitched, you can finish off your seam, press it toward the back, which is pattern piece number eight. And then we're gonna do top stitching the same exact way that we did for the front. Let's go ahead and do this to both of our back pieces now. Okay, now that we have sewn, we have finished off the edge, we've given it a press going toward the back, and we have our top stitching done. Now we can go ahead and do stay stitching along this curve. We're gonna start down here at the notches and stitch going up along the curve. Again, stay stitching for this pattern is done at an eighth of an inch. I'm gonna do mine at about a quarter of an inch, but let's go ahead and do some stay stitching here on both sides above the double notches going up along this curve. Let's do that now. Okay, once we have the stay stitching on here, now we can go ahead and grab pattern piece number 10. Pattern piece number 10 is the side back. You should have cut out two. And with right sides together, we're gonna match up those double notches and pin in place. Again, with the front, you may need to place some clips into your fabric along that curve. That's why we do the stay stitching. It helps us to be able to clip right up to our line to kind of slash and spread to create some room for us to add in that curve. Okay, once you have it pinned, you wanna pin the other one the same way. I'm gonna to go to the sewing machine. I'm gonna start stitching at the bottom here and I'm gonna stitch in a 5 eighth of an inch seam allowance. I will be stitching with this portion here with all the gathers going down on my feed dogs. That's just gonna help keep all of that coming through the machine smoothly and together. So again, let's go ahead and do the other side the same way and let's stitch it in place. Okay, now that we have the side back sewn on, you want to go ahead and finish off your edge and press it going toward the middle back. Once you have that pressed, now we can go ahead and do some top stitching. You want the top stitching to be on the middle back, so a quarter of an inch away from the seam. Let's go ahead and do your top stitching for both of these back pieces. Now that we have a top stitch, we can go ahead and put this to the side and start to work on our pockets. To begin working on our pocket, first we want to go ahead and fold under 3 8 of an inch along the top edge of the pocket. Go ahead and fold under 3 8 of an inch and go ahead and give that a press. Okay, now that we have pressed 3 8 of an inch along the upper edge of the pocket, and now we are going to turn it over to the right side. The right side of your pocket should be facing up now. We're going to fold it over like so onto itself. And we're gonna fold it right along that fold line. You should have transferred your fold line. I placed some notches on the side of mine and I'm just gonna pin that in place. Again, right here along the fold line, you should have either transferred the line or a notch or a mark to indicate that and then go ahead and pin it in place. So again, you have the pocket pinned onto itself. Now we can go to the sewing machine and we are going to stitch along the seam line all the way along the pocket side and lower edge at a 5 of an inch seam allowance. Okay. 
Okay, once you have stitched along your seam line, let's go ahead and trim up here along the facing area. I'm going to trim away all of the facing like so, but just some of the pocket. I don't want to trim all the pocket away like I just did for the facing. So let me just kind of move that out of the way. Once you have it trimmed, we can go ahead and flip this toward the inside. If you have a point turner, you can go ahead and grab that to poke out the corners. Okay, now we can go to the pressing station and you want to press in right along that stitching line that you stitched. Go ahead and press it all in. Once you get to the corners, you want to fold up the corners and then continue pressing in like so. So let's go ahead and press again right along that seam line that we just placed in it. Okay, once you have your pocket pressed, now we can go to the sewing machine and you want to stitch this facing portion of the pocket closed. So let's go ahead and stitch close to this pressed edge here. Let's go ahead and do that now. Once you have stitched the facing close here on the pocket, and again, you've done all your pressing, now we can go ahead and place this onto the back. If you would like to try on your skirt first and like wait to do your pockets toward the end, you can absolutely do that. That way you're making sure you're putting them in the right placement. I'm just gonna go ahead and stitch these on now. But again, if you prefer to wait until after your skirt is complete so that you can try on the skirt and place your pockets, then you can definitely do that. But once you're happy with the placement, go ahead and match up your circles and pin your pocket in place. Okay, now once you have it on, we can go ahead and do an edge stitch really close to the edge of the pocket and then you want to do a top stitch along the pocket as well. So we're going to do two stitches. Again, the first one's going to be an edge stitch right along the edge and the other one is going to be a top stitch. So let's go ahead and do the stitches now for both of our pockets. All right, now that we have our pocket sewn on, and again, we did an edge stitch and we did a top stitch. Once you have both of those pockets on, let's go ahead and grab the yoke. Our yoke pattern piece is pattern piece number 12. You should have cut out two. Make sure that you go ahead and transfer your notches as well as all of your markings. And with right sides facing, we're going to match up our double notches here and pin in place. Okay, once you have your yolks pinned on, we can go ahead and stitch at a 5 eighth of an inch seam allowance. After you have it stitched, you can go ahead and finish off your seam and you want to press your seam going up toward the yoke. After you have it pressed up, then we can do an edge stitch as well as a top stitch along that seam. So first, let's go ahead and stitch again 5 eighth of an inch seam allowance, finish off your seam, press it up toward the yoke, and then you can do an edge stitch as well as a top stitch along the seam. Let's go ahead and do that now. All right, now that we have the top stitching done on our yoke pattern pieces, now we can go ahead and place the backs right sides facing, and we're going to stitch to center seam. So you want to match up your notches, match up your yoke seams. All right, once you have it pinned, we can go ahead and stitch it in place. You can also go ahead and finish off these seams separately and then pin and stitch because once we have it stitched, we're gonna press the seam open flat. So I'm gonna go ahead and stitch it in place and then I'll just finish off the edges. But if you want to finish before you sew and then stitch at a 5 eighth of an inch seam allowance and press your seam open flat. Okay, now that we have our center sewn here, I did go ahead and finish off my seam. I pressed it open flat. So now we can go ahead and do top stitching along both sides of the center seam. So from this seam, we're gonna do top stitching a quarter of an inch away on this side, as well as on this side. So let's go ahead and do our top stitching now. Now that we've done the top stitching along the center, let's go ahead and grab our front. And with the right sides facing, we can go ahead and pin and stitch along our side seams. So let's go ahead and pin and stitch those in place now. And then I'm gonna finish off the edge with the serger.
have the side seam sewn, we can go ahead and put our skirt to the side and start to work on the carriers. To begin working on our carriers, you want to grab pattern piece number 13. This is our carrier piece and you should have cut out one. And so what you want to do is you want to take your carrier piece, you want to fold it in half. We can have the wrong sides facing so the right side of the carrier should be out toward you. And so you want to fold it in half like so and give that a press. After you have it pressed, then you can open it out and you want to fold the raw edges in to that fold that you created and then give that a press. And after you have that pressed, then you want to fold it back in half and then give it another press. So this one here, I have done all the pressing on. So I have the raw edges folded in toward the center fold. I've given it a press. So now I can go to the sewing machine and I want to do edge stitching on both long edges here, stitching really close to the edge, again, on both long sides of the carrier. So let's go ahead to the machine and do that now. Okay, once you have your carrier sewn, we're gonna go ahead and cut this into five equal sections that measures three and three fourths. So I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting them now. And again, you should have five equal sections. Okay, once you have them cut, we're gonna go to the ironing board and we're gonna press up 5 8 of an inch on one edge of the carrier. So again, 5 8 of an inch on one edge of the carrier. Let's go ahead and do that now for all of the carrier pieces. Okay, now that we have pressed under 5 8 of an inch, let's go ahead and grab the skirt. And what we're going to do is add our markings that we transferred. We're going to place the edge that we did not fold under right over the large circle. I'm pinning mine right here large oh, right over the large circle and then we're going to pin that in place okay once we have them pinned in place let's go ahead and baste all right now that we have the carriers basted on let's go ahead and start to work on the waistband pattern piece number 14 that is our waistband you should have cut one out of fabric and one out of interfacing what you want to do is go ahead and fuse your interfacing to it and on the long edge that does not have any notches on it you want to fold under 5 8 of an inch Give that a press and then trim it down to 3 8 of an inch. I've gone ahead and I've pressed mine up 5 8 of an inch and I have trimmed it down to 3 8 of an inch. So now we can go ahead and pin it onto the skirt. Okay, so with right sides facing, I am going to pin my waistband. I'm going to match up my notches, match up my small circles, and I'm just going to pin all the way along the waistband. Okay, now that we have the waistband pinned on, we can go to the sewing machine. We are going to stitch at a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, and then you can trim your seam and press your seam going up toward the waistband. Let's go ahead and stitch it in place first, and then we can trim it and then press it up. Okay, now that we have the waistband sewn on and we have trimmed our seam and pressed it going up toward the waistband, now right here along the front, we're going to fold the waistband in half like so onto itself. And we need to stitch the front opening edge of this close. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab some pins. I'm just gonna pin that in place here. And same thing on this side. I'm gonna pin this here. So go ahead and pin like so. Now we can go to the sewing machine and we just want to stitch right here along the front to close up the waistband. So let's go ahead and stitch this in place now. Now that we have it stitched, we can go ahead and trim our seam. We want to trim it down to about a quarter of an inch. And now we can go ahead and flip it right side out. Grab your point turner if you have one and just poke out your corner here. Make sure everything is nice and smooth. Okay, now we can go ahead to our pressing station and let's go ahead and give this a press. You want to make sure that this folded edge here comes right over our seam allowance like so. And we can do a stitch in the ditch. For a stitch in a ditch, working from the right side of our fabric, I'm going to place pins in here, right in this seam here, 
and I want to make sure that when I pin that I catch in this folded pressed edge on the wrong side of the garment. And again, I'm just placing that fold just right past the seam. Then I'm putting my pin on the right side making sure that I pin and catch in the fold. I'm gonna continue pinning the waistband in place just like that. Okay, now that we have it all pinned, we can go to the sewing machine and we are going to stitch right here in our seam. Let's go ahead and do our stitch in the ditch now. Okay, now that we have the waistband sewn on, this is what mine look like here after doing the stitch in the ditch. I'm just gonna clip away some of these loose threads. Now we can go ahead and secure our carriers in place. So taking that pressed edge that we fold up, you just wanna take it right to the top of the waistband and then you just want to stitch across edge stitching it in place. So let's go ahead and secure our carriers in place now. Okay, now that we have the carriers sewn on, now we can go ahead and sew our buttonhole onto the right front end, and then we can sew our button here on the left. So you wanna go ahead and grab your marking from your waistband, transfer it here onto your fabric, and make your buttonhole, and then transfer your button, and go ahead and sew your button on. After you have your button and buttonhole on, the next step is to do our hem. For our hem, we're gonna be doing a narrow hem. Because this is a curved full edge, you want to do a quarter of an inch basting stitch along the edge. That way you can ease in that fullness once you fold it up to the 5 8 of an inch. That will help to ease out the fullness here. I just went ahead and pressed up 5 8 of an inch and this is a little short. So I am opting to just finish off my raw edge with the serger. And I'm gonna try to do the tiniest hem possible just to kind of keep as much length as I can on the skirt. But again, to do the 5 8 of an inch on this curved and full edge, I do recommend applying about a quarter of an inch basting stitch all the way along the edge, press up your 5 8 of an inch, and then you wanna open it out, fold under the raw edge, and then pull on that gathering stitch to ease out any fullness once you get to the curves and around those edges. So go ahead and finish your hem and you will be all done with your skirt. Well, that is all for this sew along and I really do hope that you all enjoyed it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down for me below. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, turn on your notifications so you do not miss when the next video goes live. And I will see you all then. Blessings everyone. Bye.